today on Pat's Car Garage. As you can see, we were having a little bit of a check engine situation on the Mercedes. Um, I've already scanned it and it's the secondary air injection pump, also known as the smog pump. So uh, I'm gonna diagnose it. We're gonna figure out exactly what's wrong. I'm pretty sure it's the pump itself, but just to be safe, we're gonna go over everything that there is to go over to make sure that the secondary air injection system is working correctly. Okay, so I drove the car up on ramps um, because I'm going to probably need to access the secondary air injection pump itself, which is located beneath the alternator on the other side of the engine. So, uh, but first let's just go over all the components of the system. So I already, I popped the cover off over here, the little plastic cover, because we'll need to see some stuff over there. But things, uh, things start in the fuse box back here. So obviously, if your system is not working, you're gonna wanna check a few things. First of all, you know, simplest one, pop open the fuse box. So on mine, it's uh, 28, secondary air pump right there. So number 28 is uh, this one right here, the big orange boy. Uh, so test that for continuity, make sure that the fuse is actually still good because maybe the fuse is burnt out, but keep in mind that fuses typically don't just burn out for the sake of burning out. There might be an electrical problem that led to it burning out, like a short circuit or whatever. But if that's not a problem, there's a relay back here which controls the secondary air injection system. And check the relay, but if you pay attention, when you start your car, uh, you'll hear the relay click, not just when you start your car, but also after it warmed up to about 60 degrees, you'll hear the relay click again to test the system because the system always auto tests itself uh, after the engine has warmed up a little bit and the oxygen sensors are working. So what happens is the secondary air injection pump turns on for two, three seconds uh, and then it looks at the oxygen sensor reading and sees if it changes. If it does, it knows the system's good and that's how it passes its own little self-test. But if you pay attention, you can hear the relay click. Now, I can hear my relay click, so I'm fairly sure that's good. Uh, I replaced the wiring harness on this car, so I know the wiring's all good, and I believe the wiring starts actually down here. There's like a big plug, because that feeds power from the fuse box down to this plug, and this plug then joins the, um, the engine harness, which goes underneath the coolant bottle, and pops back up over there and here and then finally it actually goes down to the front of the engine. The wiring goes to the pump somewhere down here if you have an electric pump. Some cars had a, um, had a belt driven pump but on at least the four cylinder it's an electric pump. So the uh, next thing to test is if you do hear the pump come on but you're still getting codes then the problem is either with the vacuum solenoid here which supplies uh, to this which supplies vacuum to this solenoid via both this bottom connection, the, the both the bottom electrical connection down here and the bottom vacuum connection down there. So that's how vacuum is supplied. Then you get this little hose that pops up over here. But before you test, before you replace a secondary air injection pump, you'd have to make sure that this check valve is working correctly. If this ever breaks, you can replace it with a simple check valve and cap off this line. You don't actually need to have a vacuum operated check valve. You can just get a spring loaded check valve like most modern cars have. So if this valve ever breaks, you could just replace it with a check valve. But anyway, so one test I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop off that, uh, that connection that goes, the air hose connection that goes down to the, um, to the secondary air injection pump. I'm gonna tilt the rubber up and I'm just gonna make sure that no exhaust gas actually flows out through there because uh, if there is any exhaust gas that flows out, well then you have a problem because those exhaust gases are going into your pump and you know damaging the, the veins and the rotors and possibly the electrical, uh, the electric motor too. So this has to be good before you change your secondary air injection pump. Okay, so before we proceed, I'm gonna do a quick test, make sure that the um, the valve itself holds vacuum. So I ha just have it hooked up here to my Mighty Vac, and I'm just gonna draw a vacuum on it. Let's put about 20 inches of mercury. And as you can see, it has no problem holding vacuum. So I'm gonna zoom that in a little bit with one hand, like a skillful camera operator, and. There you go. So as you can see, the uh, the secondary air injection uh, check valve or vacuum solenoid, whatever you want to call that, is holding vacuum at 20 inches, which is about how much vacuum the engine would give. So perfect. So I can go ahead and release that. 
So now the new test setup is as follows. Um, I have the Mighty Vac uh, plugged directly into the vacuum solenoid here, just to make sure that if the system activates, I can see if it registers vacuum, but the engine warmed up a little bit uh, going up on the ramp, so the system probably won't activate, so I don't think we'll see that needle budge, but if we do, we do. Uh, on the other hand, so I unplugged this, so now we, what we want to really test is to make sure if this vacuum connection is undone, we want to make sure that no exhaust gases come out of here. Uh, if that's the case, then good. We have a good uh, we have a good check valve here, and we can uh, we can look at the the pump itself next. Okay, so let's say you're waiting for your replacement pump and uh, you want to drive your car around nonetheless. What I suggest you do is simply unplug uh, the solenoid on the bottom. The bottom solenoid is what feeds this vacuum line. So you can leave all the vacuum lines connected and you can leave the air hose connected because once you draw a vacuum on this, exhaust gases uh, will come out of here. What you can do is, like I said, simply unplug the bottom solenoid and just, you know, like, Secure the wire behind this one just to make sure it doesn't get caught in the fan So I'll just have mine like right here And I'm gonna put the cover back on and I'm gonna leave this disconnected temporarily until I get my new pump Okay, removing the pump is uh, pretty simple. So uh, these two little bolts here they go like uh, on this top bracket right here so you remove those and then there's this collar thing that goes around the like sort of rubber condom this thing has so a uh, long bolt goes on top, short bolt goes on the bottom. Uh, the hardest part will probably be unplugging the, the connector. This is actually my new pump, the one I'm gonna put in. So my old pump is over here. I pulled it apart because my new pump, this screen here was cracked. So this is from the new pump. Gonna toss that out. I removed mine from my old pump. Uh, there's just these three little clips that hold it on. You remove those and it's all good. And as you can see, um, my pump was already damaged because the first time I removed this plug I broke it off so I used epoxy to glue it back on and the second time the plug was just as stuck so I just reefed on it until it came apart and this is what it is now so this is busted I'm gonna throw this in the trash and uh, yeah the reverse is uh, to reinstall is basically just the reverse of taking it apart so super simple Okay, you guys are not gonna believe my luck. Um, the relay just died, and I tested the relay before and it was fine, but now the relay is actually dead. I, I only have, what I did was, um, I, I switched the fuel pump relay uh, with the secondary air injection pump relay because they fit the same socket, and guess what? That doesn't operate the fuel pump, so the relay is freaking dead. Ah, uh, imagine my luck. So first it was the pump. It really was the pump because I tested the pump. It had no continuity. The relay was fine. And now I install a new pump. And guess what? The relay dies. Oh my god. Terrible luck. Okay, I went to the junkyard. I found myself a new pink relay. So, let's see if this works. I really hope it doesn't because if it doesn't work... I'm going to be quite sad. And that, that's the sound of a working secondary air injection system.